The Quinn Larson Quests Book 4 Imbalance Chapter 1 Quinn, we aren't getting anywhere. Dion's voice pulled my attention away from the sight of Lionel's body lying on the sofa. Having my sight back was a benefit, but there were some things I could live without seeing. Lionel's lifeless body was one of those things. His lanky frame looked skeletal without life giving it purpose. His red hair looked flat rather than the wild mess it normally ended up in. If you don't concentrate, we won't get him back. She poked me and I came close to telling her that the apprentice doesn't hurt the master, but she was right, and I'm not that kind of wizard. Her hair was drawn back into a ponytail, and she seemed to have aged in the last week beyond her seventeen years. Her green eyes blazed out of dark rings of exhaustion. Okay, let me cover him, and then I won't be distracted. I broke the circle and placed a blanket over his body, gently as though he was still sleeping rather than empty. I had no idea whether he felt the cold or not, but it made me feel like I was doing something to help. It had been three days, and we hadn't been able to find any spells that would bind Lionel's spirit back to his body. At least he didn't look or smell like he was decomposing. The spell you used on his body is holding well. I tried to touch his cheek. Something I failed to resist doing daily. I couldn't make contact with his skin. There was something encasing him. Probably the spell that slows time. For heaven's sake, Quinn, snap out of it. Dion pulled the back of my shirt and dragged me back to the circle. He'll be fine long enough for us to get it solved. But only if you help. I don't know enough magic to do this alone. She twisted her ponytail into a knot behind her neck and rubbed at her eyes. Even at her age, the stress was starting to take a toll. I had to admit she was right. This wasn't like it was with Kate. Lionel wasn't dead. Okay, let's get this done. I wasn't going to let the hopelessness take over. You know what we need to do. We'll take a break after this. We can keep working, she said. We don't need to stop. I knew too well the danger of doing magic when you're tired. Dion was young. She might be able to go longer than me, but she was also inexperienced. We'll take a break. There's no point in burning ourselves out. We have time. Like you said, Lionel will be fine for a while. Quinn, I... No, this time I mean it. Finish the preparation. Maybe this will be the time we get what we need. I gave her the look I remembered hating from my training days. The one that promised serious but unspecified repercussions for not obeying. She nodded and closed the circle again. Yeah... Everyone we asked said the only answers would be found in the circle. They just didn't know what we were supposed to do in the circle. Too bad Fiener couldn't tell us how she found the spells. I laughed. I'm not sure anyone would have gotten the answer out of her, even if she could help us. Fiener will do anything she can to punish me for imprisoning her. Well, maybe punish was too soft a word. Dion sat across from me and then tossed the candy and precious stones into the center. Okay, what's next? I smoothed the dirt, testing for any contamination. I didn't want any mystery voices or killing spells to surprise us. Nothing seemed to be lurking, and the magic was almost fully returned from the bedrock where I'd sent it for the social worker's inspection. That brought a memory of our last meeting with Ms. Metcalf and her comment about Dion's age. Dion, when is your birthday? Uh, why? She studied the packed dirt beneath her. How do you avoid answering my questions? The oath you took should make you answer. She shrugged. I was going to answer. I just wondered why. Maybe the oath is more patient than you are. The oath wasn't sentient. I want to know how long we need to worry that Miss Metcalf is going to drop by. Oh, yeah, it's in two months. I've already told Miss M that I'll be leaving school when I turn 18. I created a small circle between us, hoping it would contain any danger. Aren't you close to graduation? Who cares? I'll be able to learn magic full time. Lionel can help make a room for me upstairs, and we can be a real coven, or whatever we're called. I looked up to see that she was focused on the candy wrappers. It would be a waste for you to quit school. She looked up at me. But I get to move in here, right? I dreaded the thought of having two apprentices living with me, 
especially one who seemed to find loopholes in her oaths so easily. That's the usual arrangement. Her smile was a contrast to the worry that had tightened her face. Great, I can probably start moving some of my stuff in over the next couple of months. I agreed. But you are not moving in until you are free of the system. She picked up the candy and tossed it between her hands. Yeah. Now let's get to it. Who are we going to call? I figured Rancid would be our best bet since he knew who Lionel was and maybe would care about him, at least as much as a spirit can care about anything. Okay, this inner circle won't let anything out, but you can put things in. Place two of the candies there and call for Rancid. Dion did as I instructed. At least when it came to magic, she was willing to obey. She whispered the spirit's name. Will he come right away? I gestured for her to be silent. We listened for a few minutes, and then a faint sound of rustling leaves came to us. Remember your question. He is likely to try to get something more than the candy, or give you useless answers. She nodded and called his name again. Suddenly the rustling noise changed to a roar of pain and then silence. Dion opened her mouth, but I held up my hand. If Francide was angry, we needed to be sure he was in the circle before asking questions. If he wasn't there, our questions would float through the spirit world, and that meant anyone could answer. The way our luck was running lately, it would probably be a killing demon. Or that voice. Why have I been summoned? His voice came just before a little whirl of dust disturbed the earth. Rancid rarely showed visual evidence of his presence. I'd always known him as a whirl of dust and a variety of noises. He always displayed his mood as sound, and by the choice this time, he was curious. Dion sat straighter and looked to me for direction. I nodded. She leaned towards the center. We have questions of a magical nature. The dust changed shape and seemed to point at Dion. Who are you? Crin's apprentice. She kept her voice even and seemed calm. I was proud of her composure. Rustling filled the circle before Rancid croaked out. Not Lionel, but something more than an apprentice. Yes, I am not Lionel. She smiled. I saw her take control of the urge to look at Lionel. She was right to do so. Rancid might not show it, but he could see what was going on around the circle. What is your question? I tensed. We'd rehearsed how to ask the question, and if Dion followed the plan, it would be fine. And she did her own thing. Well, I wasn't sure what would happen. We're looking for a spell to bring a body and spirit together. She was sticking with the plan. After a long pause, Rancid said, There is one. What will you pay for it? She looked at me and I motioned for her to continue. What price do you want? He laughed. These candies and four favors. Dion narrowed her eyes. No, the candies and one favor. Three. Dion smiled. Three candies and one favor. Agreed. No, that is not what I said. You said three. You didn't say what three. Now, what is the spell? I was impressed. Dion was almost as good at negotiating as a druid. The spell can be found in the library of Alexander at not the location of the spell. I cannot tell you the spell. It is too complex. Dion glanced at Lionel's body. Where is this library? Hmm. It is not so much where as when it is in Abyssinia. It was destroyed 3,000 years ago. That is of no use to us. The deal is not valid. Her tone gave no room for him to argue. Why do you need this spell? Are you dealing in necromancy? The dust whirled in a tight column. I watched her body tighten as the words came out. No. The spirit of a friend has been separated from his body. He is not dead. Was Dion worried about giving too much information? Or hiding pain about Lionel? You wish a spell to reunite the friend. Who is this friend? She looked at me. I shook my head. There was no need to give him any information on the hope he'd be able to help. If he had anything useful, he would have given it for the favor. It doesn't matter. Please leave so we can contact someone with more information. Good move on her part. If Rancid was holding back, a knock at his pride would loosen his tongue. Before I leave, I have a message for Lionel of the one name. Rancid's voice was like a rattle of bones. Lionel is not available. Dion was good at diverting questions. I started to see how she managed to get what she wanted from everyone. 
Hmm. It is curious that he is indisposed. I would tell him that there is rumor that his time is coming. I'll tell him. Dion looked at me and shrugged. Goodbye. We cleared the circle. What the hell was that about? Who knows? It's hard to say what Rancid might know about Lionel's future. I glanced over at Lionel's body. You did well. She blushed. Thanks. So who should we call next? No one. If Rancy didn't know, then no one else will. Or no one on that plane. Let's eat. We'll think of something else. 